Hey folks, how you doing? Nice to have you out there. I keep forgetting to turn off that light back there because it's distracting. Good morning, everyone. It's a busy day for us today. Before we get to the Genesis news, it's a, uh, we are talking to Andy Curran from Envy of None, which is Alex Lifeson's brand new band. Andy, of course, was is a lifelong friend of, of Alex. And we're going to have that to ASAP, but he's my last interview of the day. And we're going to be talking to uh, Serge from Leonette and Friends, Tagni Ragno. He was the lead singer, but he's Ukrainian, and Leonid and friends are basically Russian. They're going on tour without him. Uh, Serge has to stay in Ukraine, in Kiev specifically. We're going to be talking to him live in three hours, two hours, in two hours from now. So there you go. A lot of things going on in Rocky Street Music today. So let's get to something that, this is what Peter Gabriel said backstage at the last Genesis show. As you can see, the picture that we put up. That was a picture of them backstage, that last show. And a lot of folks have asked, why didn't Peter Gabriel go on stage? Because that stage of Genesis was not part of Peter Gabriel. Not that we know inside information, but but I know Peter... Hi, Maria. I know enough that Peter Gabriel didn't want it to be about him. All the headlines would have been, Peter Gabriel joins Genesis for the last Genesis show. Um, and that, I don't think Peter wanted that. And I don't think anybody else necessarily wanted that either. So there's a, a reason for that. Anyway, um, it was simple. It was very poignant. And this comes from, I actually saw it on Ultimate Classic Rock, but but ultimately it comes from Rolling Stone magazine where Nick, of course, who's Phil's son, who was the drummer for the last Phil Collins solo tour and the Genesis tour, because Phil, as most of you know, I hate to overstate the obvious, but as far as reporting, we have to, can't physically drum anymore. So he talked to Peter Gabriel backstage. He had never met Peter Gabriel before. That's interesting. But we always assume like there are a bunch of guys who hang out together. Last time I talked to Steve Hackett, we've interviewed him six times on this channel. He was uh, the, the, the glory years guitarist for Genesis right up until the point that he left a couple of years after Gabriel. Gabriel left in 75. Anyway, he had said that we do hang around. And last time I talked to him, he was ready to have lunch with Peter Gabriel a week later because it was their birthdays. They're both Aquarians. So Nick told Rolling Stone magazine, it was, this is backstage, it was weird. I thought I'd be, I'd be emotional and sad, but I was happy. It was a great night. It was a great way to end it. Afterwards, we got changed and had dinner and everyone was there. And he says before, because of COVID, they couldn't meet people backstage. It wasn't a thing they could do because of COVID. This was the last night they could afford to do that. So they took a chance. Obviously, Phil Collins is weak. He's frail and getting COVID would be a very bad thing for him. So he has to be extra careful. On meeting Peter Gabriel, Nick says, to be able to finally speak to someone I knew who had so much impact on my dad's life and obviously mine as well. Since we set, since the set we were doing had a lot of Peter Gabriel era stuff on it. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. He said to finally talk to him was great. So Collins said that Gabriel told him, this is what Peter Gabriel said. It was a great show. He said he was happy to be there since it was important for him uh, as well. He left in 75, as we stated earlier, and he never looked back. This is according to Nick. He never felt back into the Genesis material. He was very, very successful with his solo career, and it was great for him to be there. He said, this is the end of something I was a part of. This is what Gabriel said to Nick. Uh, he, and Nick says, we spoke briefly, and then him and my dad spoke pretty extensively and caught up uh, over all good times, you know, and it was a pretty great to see. As for a Genesis reunion, another one after this, and Steve Hackett doesn't mind when I ask him. He says, I understand you have to ask, and I understand people are curious, and they're always going to ask, and that's okay. And and I've asked Steve Hackett every single time, even concerning this tour. I said, why weren't you part of it? I was on tour. Dates were booked. It wasn't really mentioned. It wasn't talked about, even though he continually answers the question and will, like I said, forever. So Nick says, concerning any new... Um, Genesis reunion with Peter Gabriel. Nick's, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything about it. I, I, I know it was mentioned by fans, especially in the early stages of the reunion, but I think ultimately the band has grown and people have gone on their separate ways. I don't think so. At the moment, that is a possibility, he says. So don't grab onto that. I, if Peter Gabriel hasn't gone back to the Genesis material, even on this tour, he didn't. Of course, he, he did on tour, 
when he was solo with Sting, remember? He, 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 he did that. And I was at the second night where Peter Gabriel actually sang a Genesis song for the first time. So it wasn't news at to that point, but I've got it on tape. But at that point, you know, it was a great concert seeing Sting and Peter Gabriel, seeing Sting for the second time and Gabriel for the second time. But let's sigh of relief. Breathe in, everyone. It was nice what he said. It was classy what, what he did to go there. Uh, Steve Hackett was on tour. But it was kind of cool that he came to the show, that he went backstage, that he didn't make it about him. Remember, Gabriel could not get on stage that night. It wasn't going to... All the headlines, like I said earlier, would have been Peter Gabriel joins Genesis for the last show. It's, it, it, this was the goodbye for Phil. This was the goodbye for Mike Rutherford and Steve uh, and uh, uh, Tony Banks. So that was it. That was the goodbye for that. And he was there because he was part of it in the beginning. But he, that was just the right balance, right? So Peter Gabriel has always been an incredibly uh, mindful, respectful man. Uh, not everyone's agree with every move he's made. I wish he'd release more albums when I talked to Tony Levin right after 9-11, long time ago, where he explained to me he was scared because his wife was in the middle of New York City when that happened. I think she's still his wife. I don't know. It's been a lot of years. I asked him about the next Peter Gabriel album, and Tony said, we never, ever know. We never know. We just leave it up to Peter, and if he wants to release another album, we will be there waiting with our shoes on. So, and then we hear now, uh, there's word from Tony Levin even that that album, that next album has progressed quite nicely and could be released in the next 12 months or six months. Depends who you talk to. So that's good news. It was classy all around here. And you know what? When you talk about bitterness in bands, you don't get a lot of that in Genesis. People try to drum it up. I ask questions. I have to ask the Pink Elephant questions. How are you guys doing? Are you guys getting along? And like I mentioned last time I talked to Steve Hackett, which was just a few months ago uh, in February, I said, how's it going? He said, well, I'm meeting with Peter for our birthdays because our birthdays are not too far apart. And my birthday just happened because I'm a February 1st baby. And they're February babies as well. Uh, none of us are babies anymore. But it was really nice to hear that he was getting together with them and he still contacts them. In our trailer, you'll see Steve Hackett talking about I said, do you still contact the, 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 the Genesis guys? And he, and he says, yeah, I'm still in contact with them. It's not necessarily in person all the time, but it was during COVID that he answered that question. So there you go. To paraphrase before we go, Peter Gabriel just said that, well, Nick Collins had never, Phil's son, had never met Peter Gabriel before. And he had, and I'm, again, I'm paraphrasing, he had basically said it was nice to finally meet him. Peter Gabriel told him it was a great show. He says, I was a part of this in the beginning and it was important for me to be here tonight. And it, it was, someone had mentioned on one of the Genesis group that it was an awkward meeting. It wasn't awkward at all. I mean, this was really nice. In keeping with the gentlemen that Genesis are, really think about it. There's not a lot of drama around Genesis and the past members. I talked to Anthony Phillips. I talked to one of their producers, David Henschel. And he said, basically, they just get to it. They get in the studio and they get to it. And there's not a lot of gab around and they're just, you know, they're professionals. They just get the job done. And I said, there wasn't a lot of drama. And David said, not really. No, no, they, these guys know what they're doing. So it's nice to see that. We have just released a thing last night about Pink Floyd and look how much drama concerning Gilmore and Roger Waters. You, you get any band that's been together for a lot of years and you get that. Many years ago, before Triumph made a full circle towards their documentary and getting back together, uh, Rick Emmett told me, he says, well, I sold my rights. And, and, and he says, do you want to go on a bus ride with your ex-wife? I get along with my ex-wife, but probably a bus ride would be other question. But I understand what he meant. And then he came full circle. You get older. As you get older, you should have less drama in your life. That's usually the way it goes. That's why when I talk to people who want to get political on this channel, I'm going, really? We don't do that on this channel. We're not interested. This is an oasis away from all that crap. We're not going to talk about that here. By the way, people have asked, who is this? That's my favorite hockey player of all time. That is uh, uh, Bernie Perron. And that's his rookie card, a fake rookie card, when they re-release them, signed by Bernie. I had a chance to meet him because we were presenting some stuff at that, uh, at that hockey card show. I love Bernie Perron. I was a goalie my entire life. 
I keep forgetting to mention, people keep asking, who is that in the background? But you can kind of see the Philadelphia Flyers, longtime Flyers fan. But anyway, getting that out of the way. Getting back to what he had said, uh, he said that he saw his dad and Phil Collins and Peter Gabriel really catching up and talking a lot, which was to him, you know, very heartfelt and it was cool. It was a nice stamp. I worry about Phil Collins. I don't want to start rumors because we don't do that, but you just look at the pictures. He looks very, very frail. So I hope he's okay. Um, the pictures show that there's something going on, but who knows? He, you know, his medical health is his business, but I just hope he's okay because I'm such a big fan of Phil Collins. I love the man and Peter Gabriel as well. So there you go. You're up to date. Um, like I said, excuse me. We're talking to Andy Curran, who's in a band with Alex Lifeson of Rush, formerly of Rush, at 4 p.m. today, Atlantic Time. And we're going to talk about the album that's released today, Envy of None, Alex and Andy's new band. So we're doing that. That's not on live. We'll be putting that up tomorrow. We're also talking to um, Serge Tagniragno, who is was the lead singer of, of, of Leonid and Friends, live on this channel at 11 a.m. This is like... Uh, about an hour and 40 minutes from now, live, and you can ask him questions. He's in his apartment in Kiev, and we'll play some songs for us. They're going to try to set that up. So if you want to talk to him, find out what his safety level is. We heard that Kiev is as safe right now as it has been since the beginning. So it's safer to be there. But I did ask him, how do you feel when you go put your head on the pillow at night? He says, I hope I wake up. So he stayed in Kiev. In, in Ukraine because his father is sick and he has to stay there. A few people have sent us questions. If you want to get on, it'll be live on this channel in uh, an hour and 40 minutes. So keep that in mind. Love you guys. Thank you as always. If we're just coming on now, just read the video because uh, 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 I've got to get ready for this interview. Um, it's not every day you talk to someone who's a musician live in Kiev, Ukraine and uh, taking your questions. We haven't come on live with the guests for a long time. And we will. And by the way, this is something, before I leave, I will tell you, we're going to start doing this on a regular basis. We're finally going to ask artists, come on live with us, take questions live, and we'll go from there. And I know you guys want that because this channel, even though I've come on live a lot this week, this channel is still mostly interviews. Go back and look. We've interviewed a lot of great performers in the last year, at actually three, four years. So please subscribe. Please like our video. See, it's only at 24. I've only asked a few people uh, to remind me now and then, but please like our video. And I'd appreciate it if you buy t-shirts to support our channel. Take care of yourself. We'll be back in an hour and 40 minutes with Serge Tagni-Ragno from Leonid and Friends. Take care. <laughs>